Hey guys, today we're taking a look at Sony Online Entertainment's newest development, Landmark. Essentially, Landmark is an MMO builder game where players are offered the opportunity to use an aspect of game developer tools to build the content within this Landmark world. Today we're going to be visiting Truth Seeker as she gives us a tour of her work. Okay, Truth, can you tell us what your inspiration was for your um, claim? Yeah, I kind of wanted to build a Zen Garden bathhouse. I had done it in Rift, but um, when I got here, I found out that we could excavate the land. I decided to go more for the um, Indonesian look, but it's still supposed to be meditation, tranquil. Gives It's a spa, luxury spa and hotel. Okay, so what are we looking at here? This is a gazebo where you can sit and meditate and rest in the gardens, overlooking all the flowers and looking at the main hotel out in the... Um, out back there, you can see the greenhouse from here and right next door to the spa. All right, so as I look at your entrance here, I notice that it has a very Asian flair. Yes, I kind of wanted it. It's a combination of, like I said, Chinese, Japanese, and Indonesian. Um, the Asian influence to get you in the mood for the tranquil type of atmosphere that you're going to be doing when you're staying here at this place. Kind of put people in a zen, a zen mode. Zen, relaxation, but there's also exercise places here too for you. Uh, so look at this, I just noticed that it's incredibly intricate. Oh, it took several days just for the lower level, um, the main level, and doing the balcony before I even started to do the outside roofing. Um, it was simple voxels um, because I had not... And I'm still not totally proficient at doing the microvoxels and the antivoxels. So it's strictly very simple design, uh, very symmetrical, and uh, therefore also, like I said, it's a pleasant valley area. I figure we want the trade winds to flow through so you get a breeze. There's no need for air conditioning. Okay, Drew, so as I look at this, I notice that there's a lot of different types of material that you're using. Can you... Can you tell us what you used uh, in particular for maybe this section right here that we're looking at? Okay, the bench is made out of pearl wood tiles, floor tiles, and it's made with marble trim. The roof that you can see that's hanging over part of it is done with plain wood shingles. Okay, the brickwork is made with a uh, work stoned slab, and the fireplace, which is behind you, is done with uh, granite. It's also with this polished granite, marble. It's got obsidian around the trim here, and it's got more marble. And then it, on the inside, we actually have um, the tundra type stone and the fireplace um, with the wood so that it would give it the more, if you notice there is some brown in there, it makes it look like it, like it has been used and it's burned. Okay, and how long did this take you to make, this particular fireplace with all of the decorations? Fireplace was actually made in two um, two different times because I originally had that back wall up closer, and so it was like half the size it is now. You can actually see through it now, and the same fireplace is on the other side. And it, so I would say it probably took me several hours to do, just because of trying to get it all even. Now this bench is just absolutely amazing, and I think what's also incredible about it is the the shadow and lighting effects on it, is that something that maybe you had thought about when you were doing your design? Yes, I try to take into effect the different times of day. This actually looks better at night than it does during the bright daylight because the nighttime and when it comes starts turning twilight you have a lot more shadows and it reflects off the um, off the buildings and off the furniture and everything, giving it a nice effect. Now you mentioned night and day. I hear a lot of our guildmates talk about that and uh, that some, some houses look better in the day and some better look at night. Can you kind of give us an idea what that means? Yes. Um, on the inside here, there's a really bright copper chandelier. At, during the nighttime, it's really, really bright. During the daytime, but you can see it from, from here even. You can see how bright it is looking inside. During the daytime, all those lights dim down. It's like it's on an automatic timer dimming. So you see more of the actual chandelier without the glare of the light coming through. Um, so lighting does have a, play a big effect wherever you put your lights and stuff in, and also in your rooms when you use candles, when you use fireplaces, that type of thing. It does give a different lighting. So we see out here on your patio that you have this piano. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, one of my neighbors uh, dropped it off for me, and I 
built the platform and put the roofing and everything over it so we'd have outside entertainment and built the bar to match it. Okay, so now we're looking at this amazing chandelier that even from outside seems to illuminate the whole entire house. What, um, where did you get this and how did you build it? I built it voxel by voxel and I was up on the ceiling, I was down on the floor, I was on the rafters, um, every which way trying to build this to make sure it was all even, make sure it, it uh, was able to be symmetrical from all angles. It's absolutely amazing and all of the wood that you have here in here as well and so the wood design is kind of part of that zen relaxation to give people kind of a maybe a closer to nature feel right and I kept the other colors like um, as you'll see there's green um, emerald because I thought the green transitioned better into the wood than say um, the, the blue sapphire wood at least in this area here now, you can't have a resort without a nice flat-screen television. Can you tell me about your flat-screen? Oh, yes. Actually, the couch was also made from the same template that I made the flat-screen with. That particular couch was. Um, I made the flat-screen outside, templated it, and brought it inside, and then I built the cabinet around it. And then I did the same thing here with the, with the cushions. Those were two flat-screens, one turned one way, one turned the other. And it's two pillows made for the armrest, and then I built the base. Okay, if you turn down this hall here, you have two public bathrooms for the people who have the bedrooms upstairs because they do not have en suites. So you have two of them that can be utilized down here, complete baths. The one you're in has a shower and a bathtub, and the one up here by me has uh, just a bathtub, a soaker bath, and then the other one there has a bedroom with its own bathroom, its own en suite. So this design here is an actual bathtub. Yes, that is a bathtub. And this is this a guest room? This is a guest room with its own bathroom. It has a complete bathroom. What is the material you used here, say for example, for your toilet seat? Toilet seat is used obsidian. And the toilet, I either make the toilets usually out of ice or I make them out of um, stucco. Every large hotel has to have a, me a media room where people can communicate. So this is our computer room here. And we have the vault for safety. People can lock up their valuables. And off, off here we do have another bedroom with a day bed, a sitting area, and a, and a bed. This bedroom here would have to use the public uh, the other bathrooms that you had seen before now this furnishing over here looks incredibly realistic what is are these props also those are props those are brand new props they just brought in a couple days ago it's the armchairs and the padded sofa and this floor tell me about it it's amazing <laughs> the floor is solid mithril it's the raw mithril and the uh, bedspread here is uh, rubicite well, what I was originally trying for is I wanted it to look like water with some depth in it, um, like a little pond. Eventually, what I would have liked to do is maybe put, if I can learn how, is to make koi and put koi down in here and then get rid of the black patches in the center to make it look like a pond. It does seem to have kind of a sense of motion to it, and this little design here uh, near where I'm standing almost kind of looks like a fish trying to come out of the water. Mm-hmm. That, well, that's what gave me the idea of making it into a koi pond. Okay, true. So I'm looking at this wall, this amazing purple color, and it just has such an amazing amount of richness to it. What what material is it? Amaranthine, and I used it because it did have texture, and a lot of your Asian countries do like their colors, the purples, the reds, the greens, and the royal blues. So I, I wanted to make kind of a statement on this wall. If you notice, the stairs are all inlaid, as well as the landings are marble inlaid, as well with wood. It's the striped wood mixed with the burl wood. And off to the right down here, onto the right, there's a powder room for the soda shop. Wow, a lot of amazing uh, pinks and greens in here. And again, we got the little pitcher for your water. Right. Didn't use that in every room. Some of them actually, I did make um, faucets for myself. Okay, what do we have over here behind you? 
This is the, this is the soda shop. Oh, wow. This image up here is a prop as well, right? Right. The picture is, but the frame is, is I put around uh, all three of these pictures in here. Now, this is a lot of wood. How much could we anticipate one would have to gather to be able to get this the, much uh, I have design? probably used about 100,000 pieces of burl wood easily. Wow. Tell me about the ceiling. How are you able to get this awesome light effect? And if you'll notice, there's also an inlay up there. Yeah, the, that's very amazing. I use the Lumicite Orb lights, and I use diamond as the trim, so the diamond bounces the light back off, and it, it makes the room look a lot lighter. Also, like I said before, the room will look brighter when it's nighttime outside than when it is daytime. So no resort would be complete without a sauna, right? And that's what we have here? We have a dry sauna, and there's towels in there, and there's a bucket for when you want to have a little steam. Very nice. And this, again, all wood. Wood and there's some metal. Okay, I'm coming into this other room. Oh, and then we have the inlay, huh? Right. Actually, we have a fireplace to, to your left, and then we have... This is supposed to look like it is an outdoor, so it's kind of like a what we used to call a diorama when we were kids. And what I did is I blew up one of the photographs into a, as large as I could get it and then added the plants around it to make it look like the patio is going out into the forest. That's amazing and incredibly intricate. How long did this take you to make? Uh, about three hours. Wow, to I was where I wanted it. I was kind of expecting you to say three days there. That is very impressive. Now this bathroom here has an amazing floor. What is the material? It's polished granite. It has a very earthy feel to it. Tell us about the shower head up here. The shower head is made like a rain shower. It took uh, five voxels. Okay, so behind you is your big screen. Yes, it is. It's a full-size screen, so that everybody gets a good vantage point up from it. Meeting room, you know, today's briefing will be on hotel etiquette uh, for our staff. So we have set up our chairs, and we have our big screen here, which we will project how we want our customers to be treated. I have to admit, I really enjoy an ocean, aqua feel to things, and this bathroom really captures um, a lot of the water. Can you tell me a little bit about this bathroom and the floor and the material? The bathroom flooring is marble, and it's the marble flooring tiles. Then the gray underneath the sink is the granite once again. Then we have the black obsidian with the marble. The walls are done with tundra ice and regular ice. That gives it the light blue on the white pinstripe effect. And it kind of shimmers. And what room do we have here? We have our restaurant for our clients. We're still awaiting the arrival of our bench seating, extra seating for people who are waiting because we eat in shifts, just like a cruise ship. Uh, is this for the employees or is this for your guests as well? This is for the guests as well as the employees. The employees will eat on a different shift. Now, this is something I recognize having worked in the hospitality and the restaurant business. This would be the kitchen, right? Yes, it is. We have a walk-in refrigerator freezer right here. And then over here we have our drop-down utility sink to clean our dishes. We have a metal work tray area. Then we have our stove. We don't have such a big stove as a lot of commercial kitchens would because we deal with a small clientele. Okay, Truth, so what is this room we have here? This is my voxel room. If do you remember how thin those dining room tables were, the tops of the tables? Right. What I did is you'll notice the second from the bottom here and the second from the right-hand side, there's a wafer-thin voxel that's laid horizontally. I used those, and I cut and paste them together until I got the size I wanted. And then I made a base out of using the regular voxels. All right, so tell me about this amazing room with this floor and this very interesting... Uh effect that's going on here. Right. This is part of the spa building. This is the meditation room. And you'll notice there's an obelisk there with a little white, oh, with a little orangish light. And we've made it nice and calm and serene where you're looking out over into the gardens. From any angle that you look from this room, you will find there's gardens, there's flowers, and it makes it for ease of relaxation and tranquilization so that you can meditate. 
And and how is that light made, that light source? This light source here is done with, it's a prop that's made from obsidian. It's called work obsidian because you have to go through a process of um, going through an alchemy thing to work it up. And then you have your uh, work obsidian and that's, it takes quite a few of them to make it. So what I'm looking at right now has a very, very nice Asian feel to it. With our with our guildmate neighbor in the background, so you've really managed to capture a great deal of foliage and fauna and and flowers and such in here. How long did it take you to build this uh, this area? Oh, it's still a work in progress. The building in front of you took me several days to complete, and um, I've done a couple couple of touches up on the outside, just little modifications. This whole area here. Since I've been playing, I have just been building, building, building. If I'm not uh, out foraging, I'm building. All right, so not right now. We're looking at all of this in the daylight. And like you said, it really does seem to enhance and bring out kind of a almost a very visceral effect to go into from a night into a day. Right, especially when the sun coming up over the mountains, you have a lot of shadow play that comes in. And it really accentuates the woods, the... Um, the flora and the fauna just kind of make, they stand out a lot brighter. At nighttime, the, a lot of the flowers glow, but during the daytime, when the sun hits them, you can see the true colors, and they're really, really nice. Well, as Quailin would call it, this is my stable of my machines. This is where I do all my work. My smelting, my sanding, my loom work, everything is done over here. I put the walls in between because I found it easier to not have to double click on each one of my tools when I go to use it and accidentally cl click on the wrong tool. So it made it a lot easier when you go up to something, it automatically highlights when you're close to it and have your, and it's easier to click. That way you're not clicking on the wrong instrument. Okay, and here we have your library with this amazing light starting to just now come in. Right. So. The people who read in here will actually be able to read by natural light as well as by artificial light. Okay, this was one of my first attempts at doing a bedroom, and these templates I had gotten from a swap meet. However, I accidentally put a voxel on one of them, and it made a nice star pattern. So I made the star pattern on the inside, and it doesn't show up on the other side. The game. So uh, I know that part of this is not to get discouraged or frustrated and upset. So I guess we can clearly see from what you have here is that you just hang in there and you just keep uh, doing your best and keep experimenting, right? Not only that, it most most of this stuff is made with a simple square voxel. I have very few things that are actually that I have done that are templated that are very very small and tiny and thin, and people are usually willing to share their templates with you so you can get some things that are micro thin that look you know like regular furniture amazing how many levels is this home there are three levels above ground and there are two levels below ground the soda shop was on the very bottom level we want to thank Truth Seeker for allowing us to have this time to visit her amazing place. And in the next segment, we're going to be taking a look at my guildmate Radish's place. So we hope you stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe so you can watch upcoming events.